Hello everyone. Welcome to our first video on the subject of uh, physics mechanics in university. So this section of videos that we're going to be doing for you is going to be a continuation of your high school physics and a lot of this you will have done already in high school. And what the point of this video is to just kind of introduce some of the concepts that we're going to be going over as well as some of the concepts that you're going to run into in your first year kind of first semester university physics where uh, that, that all you know, engineers have to take, okay? So what we've done is we, we just have a little bit of a uh, couple diagrams here that I'm just gonna quickly go over for you. And uh, a lot of this stuff is gonna be very familiar to you. So you know, if, uh, you know, if this is really, really easy for you, you know, it never hurts to just go over it again. So as we can see here, we have uh, physics mechanics at the top and usually physics mechanics is broken up into two bodies of study, okay? So we have, or physics in general, we have st statics and we have dynamics, okay? So statics is obviously the study of bodies in equilibrium, so bodies that aren't moving, um, where all the forces generally, the summation of all the forces in the system are equal to zero, all right? And it makes the problems actually a lot more simple than when they're moving, which is uh, what we have in, in dynamics, okay? And um, which is the study of bodies in accelerated motion. So. Dynamics is generally not something that civil engineers study that much. Uh, you will do a little bit of it, but uh, generally that's for mechanical engineers. Uh, civil engineers, generally everything that we're studying is not moving because you know we're dealing with bridges and, and uh, buildings and that kind of stuff, at least at the start anyway. So let's, uh, let's move down to this, uh, this darker area here, okay, where we have uh, some of the units that I'm sure we're familiar with if we've graduated from high school, but I'll just go over them again. We have uh, SI units here, which is generally what we'll be using. However, uh, if you're in Canada, um, I mean in the States, you're, you're gonna be working with the uh, the imperial system, right? So you're gonna be working with pounds and feet. In, in Canada, you'll also be working with pounds and feet because a lot of Canadian engineers have to deal with American engineers and uh, vice versa, so you need to be familiar with both. So, we have, um, we have our, our length, length units here, so in SI that's meters, in, um, in the FPS system, or the, the American system, okay, that's, uh, that's feet. In uh, both systems, uh, American and Canadian, or European as well, the, uh, the time unit is all obviously the same, we have seconds, minutes, hours, that doesn't change. For mass, we have kilograms uh, in SI, and FPS we have slugs, okay, so slugs is a uh, pound second squared per feet unit. All right, we, you don't really uh, end up dealing with that too much. I barely saw any of that in any of my physics, uh, mechanics problems or anything like that. So that's not something really to worry about. And for force in SI units, we have the Newton and you'll, you'll see that pretty much in every problem you do in physics. And that's uh, kilogram meters per second squared. And in the American Imperial system, it's just pounds. So pounds of force, okay? So let's move down. We have the basic quantities are related by Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, right? I, I'm sure we're all familiar with that from basic physics from high school. And uh, we just have a few conversion factors here, okay? So converting feet to meters, slugs to kilograms, pounds to newtons, okay? Uh, generally, your professor will give these to you on the exam if they don't give you those. Um, just, just try and ask them and, and probe to see if you know, you'll have to memorize any specific ones. A lot of the times they'll tell you which ones will be important for the test, okay? Because they don't expect you to memorize whole tables of conversions, that's ridiculous. Okay, so let's move along now and let's take a look at the list of topics that we're gonna be addressing in the, these videos, okay? So the first video, which is this one, is gonna be a review video. We're gonna do three really simple problems, all right? And in those three simple problems, we're just going to do a little bit of unit conversion and we're just gonna kind of warm you up to uh, what we're gonna be dealing with later in this, uh, in this course. Uh, second, we're gonna be talking about vectors and scalars, okay? So vectors and scalars, um, you know, a vector quantity is a scalar with a direction, a scalar it has no direction, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, coordinate systems, you have the polar coordinates, Cartesian coordinates, unit vectors, position vectors, all super important for physics mechanics. It's gonna be like half the course, so. Uh, next, we're going to move into equilibrium of a particle or a uh, free body diagram. Okay, so, you know, drawing free body diagrams, which is a big part of exam questions in uh, physics mechanics in university. Uh, you know, springs, cables, pulleys, that kind of stuff. Kinematics in two uh, dimensions or motion under uniform acceleration. Okay, so that's kind of uh, when we're getting into like dynamics, easy dynamic stuff. 
like uh, parabolic motion, you know, dropping something off a cliff and throwing it and how far does it land, that kind of, uh, that kind of stuff. So that's what we're gonna be working on. Then we're gonna go into work energy and conservation of energy. Okay, so we're talking about in that uh, potential energy, uh, work done by uh, varying force on a spring. So those are actually get very tricky. Uh, we're gonna do a lot of questions on that. Make sure you know it, linear momentum and impulse. So uh, yeah, momentum, um, linear momentum, system of particles, particles colliding, that kind of stuff. Center of mass, center of gravity, and centroid, which is gonna be absolutely paramount importance in civil engineering in uh, strengths and materials. Uh, we have a series on that, so just check that out. But if, as you'll see in that series, we, we're always referring to centroid, center of gravity, center of mass in those videos. So we really, uh, we're gonna get that down absolutely in, uh, in this series of videos. And then we have a moment of a force, okay? So, you know, uh, the moments created by different forces, uh, cross products, couple moments, all that good stuff. Very important in civil engineering. So, with that being said, uh, I hope that wasn't too long. Let's take a look at the, just a few very simple example questions, okay, that we, I'll just solve really quickly and they're not too complicated at all. The, the first kind of example that I have up here is a little bit of a visual example, okay? So you have one kilogram, okay? And one kilogram is equal to, in force units, this is a mass unit, in force units, it's equal to 9.8 newtons, all right? And how we arrive at that is just, uh, we have one kilogram, right? Okay, and if we go ahead and we multiply that by 9.81 meters per second squared, okay, which in SI units is uh, gravity, acceleration, okay, we will get 9.8, right, meters kilogram per second squared. All right, and if we take a look at the uh, our table for what a Newton is, this unit here, okay, is a Newton, all right? So that would be uh, 9.81 Newtons. And for f uh, force here, so one slug, which is a unit of mass, is equal to 32.2 pounds, all right? So those are uh, just kind of two graphical representations if they help you. Let's take a look at the first question and let's just go through these real quick. And uh, if you wanna pause the video now, um, or if you want to, we're gonna include this file in the link below. Uh, in, in the comment section. So just go ahead and, and download this and, and try these before you look at the video, right? That might be helpful. It's a good review for starting at university. All right, with that being said, let's read the first question. The speed limit in most US highways is 65 miles per hour. Convert 65 miles per hour to meters per second. How many inches per minute would that be? All right, so the question asks two things. It wants us first to convert 65 miles per hour to meters per second. So let's go ahead and do that first, right? So. And this is going to be our first question here is we are going to take our 65 miles per hour. All right. And well, what should we do first? Let's go ahead and let's convert miles to meters. All right. And like I said before, the your professor probably will be nice enough to give you a table of the most on, on, on your formula sheet with the most important pertinent kind of uh, conversions. So you know, you refer to your table and you take a look at how many meters are in a mile, okay? And there's 1,609 meters in a mile, okay? So we have miles over hours. And when we're doing this kind of dimensional analysis, and this is something that you probably should have learned in chemistry. If you haven't, that's okay. We'll practice it, okay? Is we want to arrange the units so that they cancel, okay? So what we're looking to do here is we want to cancel miles, okay? So we have miles over hours, okay? And then we have 1,609 meters in a mile. All right, so as we see, we have miles on the numerator, miles on the denominator, those are gonna cancel, all right? And we'll cancel them all at the end, but I'm just, uh, I'm just pointing that out to you. All right, so uh, convert 95 miles per hour to meters per second. So, okay, we have, uh, we have our meters here, but we're still in hours, and we wanna convert hours to seconds. Okay, so as we can see, the hours is in the denominator, so we're gonna to wanna to put an hour in the numerator. So we have one hour, okay? And how many minutes in an hour? Well, there's 60 minutes in an hour. All right, but that is going to leave us with a unit of minutes and we want a unit of seconds. So, like I said before, we have minutes in the uh, denominator. So we're going to try and cancel that and we're going to have minutes in the numerator here and how many seconds in a minute? 60 seconds. Perfect. Now, 
if we go ahead and we start canceling the units, you'll see that we, are, we have miles here and miles cancels with miles, right? Okay, and well, what else can we cancel here? We have hours cancels with hours and we have minutes cancels with minutes. And we should be left with, what are the remaining units? Meters per second, right? And if we multiply 65 times 1,609 and then we divide by 3,600, so 60 times 60, you should end up with, uh, just rounding off, 29 meters per second. Perfect. All right, and that's the first part of the question. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this, what the second part of the question asks. How many inches per minute would that be? All right, well, let's start again in a similar manner that we did before. Let's go ahead and convert miles, okay, to meters. So we'll start with that. So we'll start off with 65 miles per hour, and once again we have 1,609 meters per mile, right? And if we want to go ahead and now convert meters to inches, all right, instead of, I mean, you could convert directly miles to inches, but that's a little bit awkward, and uh, that conversion you generally won't be on a table, so sometimes you need to go from miles to meters and then from meters to because something more familiar. So, how many inches in a meter? 39.37. Okay, so let's go ahead and cancel that meter unit. So we'll put the meter on the bottom and we have 39.37 inches, very good. And finally, we need to convert hours to minutes, right? We have an hours unit here and let's go ahead and put hours on the top. We want to go ahead and put minutes on the bottom, right? So that our hours cancel and let's go ahead and cancel units again. We have miles and miles and we have hours, hours, right? And meters and meters. And what are the units that we're left with? Well, inches per minute, okay? So see what I'm doing here with this dimensional analysis and I'm canceling the units? This is something that you, this can solve problems for you if you don't know how to do them. That, this is extremely important, knowing how to cancel units in this, in this way. And the best way, honestly, to do it is to practice problems like this, but especially in chemistry and in uh, physics here, this is, uh, this is extremely important, okay? So really make sure that you understand this concept of what I'm doing and how I'm canceling these units, all right? So finally, if we uh, just go ahead and we just calculate that, so 65 times 1,609 times 39.37, okay? And, uh, sorry, that's a 60 there. All right, we are going to be left with 69,625 uh, inches per minute, okay? And, so what we can do is we can just go ahead and rewrite this as 69.6 times 10 to the 3 inches per minute. All right, just clean it up a little bit. You don't have to, both are okay. And there we go. That's the first question done. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second question. And this one is uh, fairly simple. We'll, we'll try and go through this one really quickly. So, we have uh, one U.S. fluid gallon contains a volume of 231 cubic inches. So let's go ahead right away and we'll just write that down. So one gallon is equal to 231 inches cubed. Perfect, so that's the information we're given. How many liters of gasoline would you have to buy in Europe to fill a 12 gallon tank? Okay, so in this question, uh, kind of intuitively you need to know that in Europe, the, uh, the, the unit of measurement is SI, all right? And if that's not indicated, I mean, just, just ask your professor, they'll tell you. So, and uh, how much gasoline, how many liters of gasoline would you have to buy in Europe to fill a 12 ga gallon tank? So liters here, they tell us in the question anyway, okay? So that's a good question. Well, um, the, we know that one gallon is equal to 231 inches cubed, right? So. Let's go ahead and let's convert the gallons to inches cubed. All right, so let's come over here and we have 12 gallons, okay, times, and then we wanna cancel the gallon unit, right? So we have one gallon over uh, 231 inches cubed, right? And we are going to now, and that's gonna leave us with a unit of inches cubed, right? And we're going to, we want to convert inches cubed to centimeters cubed, okay? Because we know that one liter 
and I'm just gonna write this over here. One liter is equal to 10 to the three centimeters cubed. All right, so that's just a, a little conversion to remember here. One liter is, and that's one that you probably should remember, to be honest. One liter is equal to 10 to the three centimeters cubed. Okay, so we're gonna try and convert this into centimeters cubed so that we can put it into liters, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. And we know that in one inch, okay, it, uh, one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters, okay? So when we're, and as you can see, we're doing uh, cubic inches to cubic centimeters. All right, so the way we do that is we just go ahead and cube the conversion for a single inch or an, uh, an inch to a centimeter. We're just gonna cube the centimeter, okay? So that's how we're gonna go ahead and convert that. So let's go ahead and we have 2.54 centimeters and we're going to cube the whole inside of the bracket, not just the centimeters cubed, okay? And that's going to be one inch cubed, okay? All right. And now all we really have to do is go ahead and we can cancel the units. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we'll cancel the gallons. Okay, we're gonna cancel the inches cubed and we're left with a unit of centimeters cubed, right? And all we need to do now is multiply 12 by this, by this cubed, and we should end up with 45,424.9 centimeters cubed. And if we uh, take a look at our conversion here, one liter is 10 to the three centimeters. So this is going to be, if we move that decimal place over, okay, three places, we're gonna have 45.424 times 10 to the three, okay? And that is going to be equal to 45 liters. All right. And there's the answer for the second one. So the third one is uh, very, very simple, straightforward, and only take a few seconds to finish. And that's going to be it for our three example questions. Okay, so let's go ahead and highlight that one. And we have a house is advertised as having 2,840 square feet under its roof. What is the area in square meters? All right, so I mean, this one is uh, fairly straightforward. All we need to do is convert square feet to square meters. And that's a basic conversion. We know that one square foot is equal to 0 0.3048 meters squared. All right, and now all we need to do is just multiply 2,840 by this conversion. So 2,840 square feet times, all right, and this is in the numerator, right? So we want to cancel square feet, so we're going to put that in the denominator. And let's go ahead and do that. Very good. And if we go ahead and throw that in our calculator, all right, coming down over here, we should get a value of 263.8 meters squared. And that's the answer. So I guess the, uh, the, the, the two tricks or the two things to focus on, all right, would be one, know how to approach a unit conversion question, okay? Because when you get into later years, okay, this kind of stuff is just going to be, uh, especially when you kind of do hydrology and civil engineering, it's pretty much all unit conversion. So you're gonna be, have to be very, very strong in unit conversion. So this is something to focus on uh, as well. So knowing how to approach the question, right? Because in this question, if you'll remember, okay, we wanted to convert to, uh, we wanted to convert first to meters, okay? and then to inches, all right? So, so knowing how to do that is a lot of uh, practice and experience, all right? And second question is really to familiarize yourself with the basic conversions. So know, you know what, how many inches are in a centimeter, how many, uh, how many feet are in a meter, okay? And if you know those off the top of your head by doing a lot of these questions, you won't, uh, you won't get stuck on the exam because that's not what we want. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, I know this was a bit of a longer video, but this is just kind of an introduction in the whole section that we're gonna be doing, and we wanted to do a few problems to start you out. So stay tuned for the next questions. We're going to delve a little bit deeper into the, the subject, make sure you guys, you know, learn everything. All right, subscribe and like if you like this video. Thanks for watching.